Hello, this is Ed from practicalnetworking.net. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you about discontinuous wildcard masks. Before watching this video, you should definitely watch the wildcard masks video that we released last week. There's a link in the description just below the like button. This video is a direct continuation of that video. In that video, we talk about how wildcard masks are very similar to subna mask, except for the ones and the zeros are flipped. And we also talk about these three functions that wildcard masks provide. In particular, we talked about how these two functions can totally be done with subnet masks, and the thing that is different about wildcard masks is this third function over here, that you can use wildcard mask to identify IP addresses which are discontinuous. That's going to be the focus of this video. So to quickly define that, recall that subnet masks are a series of ones followed by a series of zeros, and that typically most wildcard masks you encounter are going to be the opposite, a series of zeros followed by a series of ones. But they don't have to be. This is a perfectly valid wildcard mask. You can absolutely have alternating sets of zeros and one in your wildcard mask. This is what's known as a discontinuous wildcard mask. This is the thing that's impossible to do with subnet masks. Now what we learned in the last video still applies. A wildcard mask will always look for a match wherever there is a zero. By contrast, wherever there's a one, the wildcard mask will ignore those bits. So let's talk about how that works. Let's say this is your topology. You have four different teams, your support team, marketing team, operations team, and engineering team. And each of those teams has two different networks, one to carry its data traffic and one to carry its voice traffic. All that traffic is going to aggregate onto this router. And let's just say on that router, you want to add an access control list, allowing that traffic to go somewhere. That access control list would look something like this. Now, this isn't perfect access list syntax, this is simply an example. But either way, your ACL would have a bunch of permit statements, and then a bunch of network IDs correlating to the network IDs in your topology. And in this case, since all of our topologies are slash 24 networks, you'd be using a wildcard mask that correlates to a slash 24. So let's take a look at those network IDs, and let's write them out in binary. And let's also do the same for the wildcard mask. Recall that a wildcard mask is looking for a match wherever there's a zero. So in our example, we are looking for a match along these bits, and we are not looking for a match over here. So let me show you exactly what that means for the router. Let's say a packet is going to appear from the voice network of the operations team. That packet will make its way to the router, and when that router is processing that packet against the access list, that router is going to be looking at the contents of that packet. In our case, the destination doesn't matter, we are just going to be looking at the source. So let's write out that source in binary and take a look at what the router is doing. Because of the wildcard mask, the router is looking for a match in the access list for these first three octets, because that's what the wildcard mask is telling the router to do. And so if we look through our access list, we would find a match for this packet in that line right there. Notice that line's first 24 bits match our packet exactly. Hence, we have a match and that packet will be allowed through. Over here, we had the binary equivalent of dot 66, but you'll notice these fields in the wildcard mask were all ones, which means even though we didn't have an exact match, we weren't even really looking at those bits, so it's totally okay. In fact, the packet could have been a different IP address entirely, and we would still have a match on the same line, because again, we are only looking at the first three octets for that particular packet. It doesn't matter what IP address is the actual final octet of that packet. Either way, we still have a match for that packet in that line of our access list. So that's the basic processing of an access list on a Cisco router. But now let's talk about how discontinuous wildcard masks come into play. I want to draw your attention to this column right here. Notice in that column, some of the times we are explicitly matching on a zero and some of the times we are explicitly matching on a one. Well, in binary, those are the only two options that'll ever exist. You can either have a one or a zero. So explicitly matching on both is sort of the same thing as not looking at that column entirely. Meaning we can change our wildcard mask to a one in that column, allowing our router to ignore the bits in that column entirely. Now, if we look for a match for our packet, we would see that we have a match in two different places. In fact, 
if you look at these four entries compared to these four entries, the only thing that is different is the content of this column over here, which means this bottom set is actually redundant. We don't even need them. This allows us to change our access control list from eight lines down to four lines. Because of this discontinuous wildcard mask, these four lines are still going to match traffic for all eight of our IP networks. But this optimization can actually be taken a step further. There is somewhere else in our access control list where we are matching explicitly on both a zero and a one in the same column. Can you see where that is? Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can find it for yourself. I'll give you the answer in three seconds. Hopefully, you're able to find these two columns over here. Notice some of the times in those columns we are matching on a zero and other times we are matching on a one, which means we could easily simply change those columns to a one as our wildcard mask to tell the router to simply ignore the bits in those columns. And now if we try and find the match for our example packet, you'll actually see that we match all remaining entries, which means those entries are redundant and I can remove some of those entries. This will allow me to shrink my access control list from four lines down to one. This one line in my ACL with this custom discontinuous subnet mask is still going to match traffic for all eight of these slash 24 networks. That is the beauty of discontinuous subnet masks. It allows you to reduce the number of access control lists on your router, which can lead to a performance improvement as your router doesn't have to process as many lines for every packet that's coming through its interfaces. This is the thing that's impossible to do with subnet mask. This is why wildcard masks exist. Remember, a subnet mask by a rule must be ones and then zeros. It doesn't allow you to have alternating sets of ones and zeros, whereas wildcard masks are not limited by that rule. So that is the purpose of wildcard masks, and in particular, how discontinuous wildcard masks work. Now, all that said, I feel I have to be honest with you. In reality, discontinuous wildcard masks are very rarely used. There's a few reasons for that. First, they require very strict IP addressing schemes to function. The only reason we were able to shrink from eight access lists to one access list because the IP addressing I chose for the example was very carefully selected to allow discontinuous wildcard masks to reduce the amount of ACLs. In reality, Trying to structure your IP addressing scheme around discontinuous wildcard mask ends up being more trouble than it's worth. Plus, the whole reason you want to use a discontinuous wildcard mask is for performance improvement by reducing the number of access list lines. But the issue is, in today's modern routers, reducing the amount of access lines provides very negligible performance improvements. You probably won't notice any difference going from eight access list lines down to one, like we did. In fact, you could probably go from 8,000 ACL lines down to one and still not notice much of a difference for any router built in the last 10 to 15 years. So while the functionality is cool in theory, because of these reasons, discontinuous wildcard masks are very rarely used. Regular wildcard masks, however, are still used in two key places. The first, is in network statements on Cisco routers when configuring EIGRP or OSBF. And the second is in access control lists on Cisco routers. So while discontinuous wildcard masks are rarely used, you'll still end up using regular wildcard masks fairly often on Cisco routers. My recommendation to you is to become intimately familiar with subnetting using CIDR and regular subnet masks, which are used across the entire network engineering industry and then the few places you still need to use wildcard masks, simply use the subnet mask to wildcard mask conversion trick that we showed you in the prior video. And that, my friends, wraps up this lesson on discontinuous wildcard masks. If you enjoyed this lesson, please consider liking and subscribing. If you're working towards a CCNA, check out pracnet.net slash CCNA for a bunch of free, high quality resources to help you study. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. I wanna thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.